Oh, that, yeah? Yep, the other way around, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. How many people have trouble? <laughs> you have trouble working out your orientation, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Hello, my name's Gary Phillips. Now be serious now, Gary, for change. Gary Phillips, my life in almost an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. 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 Proud owner and runner of a um, security company, e.g. electronic security and solar. Yes, I can save you money. Yippee! Let's go with it. Bye. Welcome to the Cheerwood Podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. I'm not going to lie, I'm already mentally drained. <laughs> I think that was the longest intro. <laughs> That's the longest intro ever. It's going to be a long hour and a half. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Hello, Gary. How are you doing, mate? Hello. Before we start, there's a sign behind you. How long do you think before it falls off the wall? Onto your head, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen in previous episodes that I have watched on the inter- interweb the, uh, that signs gradually fall off at, at varying intervals and people try and head them. Knowing you, you've probably done all the times the and divided it by yeah. the amount of episodes you've watched. Are you saying that I'm analytical? I thought it was going to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you're more than just Hello analytical. Side. I know that. You're more than just that. <laughs> yes. How long? Are you giving us a time or what? Huh? Have you given us a time? Uh, let's go on. Uh, let's give it seven minutes. So you gave it all that spiel. Uh, <laughs> and then, and then you went, ah, seven. give it seven minutes. <laughs> yeah, seven minutes. 30 seconds. Seven minutes, 30 seconds. Okay. Right, okay. Seven <laughs> minutes, 30 seconds. I, I, go- I take it it's be, been uh, stuck up there by a little bit of glue. <laughs> no tape. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've yeah. got to be serious for a second. No, here. you don't have to be. You do what you want, mate. Um, You've got to ask him questions. Right, we're going to go to you... sponsor. Oh, Who's sponsor. interviewing who? <laughs> <laughs> we're, going, we're just going to go to the sponsor and we'll be back. <laughs> Today's sponsors are... Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. New Digital, helping businesses build their online presence with web design, SEO, Google Ads and social media. Get 10% off when you quote Cherrywood today. Visit their website at nudigitalei.com. RA.co.uk. Right, After we're back. these we're... commercial messages, watch carefully now. Hello. Right, we're back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm already drained. Right, tell us about yourself, <laughs> Gary. Um, my name is Gary Phillips. No, seriously. <laughs> uh, Gary Phillips, um, proud father of two strapping lads, Daniel and Nicholas. Um, and. Uh, 59 years young, mental age of 14. I'll go lower than that. Uh, mental, <laughs> mental age of 10 then, yes. Yeah. No. Um, I, I, uh, I've been in sales. I am, I'm actually very shy, believe it or not. Right. Okay. Very, very shy, painfully shy, yes. Um, work in the security industry, electronic security, and um, I think it was about um, five, six years ago now. A very close friend of mine called Mark Thompson, bless him, he approached me for some help because his fledgling solar business was flagging somewhat and he wanted to have an injection of life into it. He made the mistake of bringing me on board. And what an (laughs) injection that is. Uh, (laughs) Oh boy. Um, That's that's like Botox for the soul. (laughs) Oh, listen. Um, last year, for argument's sake, um, it's, it's just because it's the most recent year, we installed 34 installations, uh, ranging from the usual house to um, farm barns and commercial flat roofs. Um, we're currently looking at doing um, four um, fruit farms in Kent at the moment, as well as um, other buildings. We're starting a... Uh, a um, um, what, what's the um, where grapes uh, grow? 
Oh, like vineyard. vineyard. Oh, we're starting a vineyard in Kent. Nice. Um, tw uh, 28 panels. So what you mean is a vineyard fourth. of solar panels? Mm -hmm. uh, very uh, very good. No. <laughs> the, the solar panels are going to be a ground mount. Yeah. South facing to the left of the vineyard. Uh, it's going to take three, three, three days to install. It's going to save the client around about 78% of their electricity bill. Right, okay. Which is phenomenal. I don't know why car parks don't have them. You know, you park underneath them. Car parks do have them, uh, but they're out, they're primarily in um, Europe at the moment. Yeah, because they, haven't been, they haven't been approved. European laws for solar are different from UK laws. All oh, right, okay. You may have heard uh, one of our colleagues uh, is uh, mentions MCS all the time, mm -hmm. being MCS qualified. Um, MCS is the equivalent of um, in business of ISO 9001. Right, yep. If your MCS, that means every single nut, bolt, bit of paper, complement slip, um, every single part of the installation has to be audited where it came from, the warranties, who's installing it, qualifications, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And uh, yeah, we have everything. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Now, our solar panels, well, you're going to say yes. Wait, wait. Yeah. Go on, what? We haven't actually said the name of the company. Yes, yeah, BA Security. No, but it doesn't no. do the. They don't do the solar panels. No. The solar panels <laughs> is Eco Energy Install. Eco Energy Install. Yeah, right? they're based in Canterbury, and they are fantastic. So is it like a? <laughs> <laughs> so is it this. like a collaboration <laughs> oh, that you have with them? So I knew this was going to be a bad idea. I started off basically um, helping Mark, and then it grew too much for me to handle myself. I met uh, some excellent in installers on one of the work jobs I was working on, and I began to speak to one of the install one of the guys working there. We struck up a very very good rapport. I watched him work, and I thought I'm not going to have anybody working on my jobs that's not tip top, yeah, really absolutely. tip top. Particularly as I give my word to my clients that they will have a absolutely phenomenal mm. system working for them. Mm. Never had a complaint. Never had a cancellation. Um, everyone loves it, the fact that uh, our systems save them an absolute fortune on their energy bills. Mm. Simple as that. Okay, so you've got a family. So you've got a family of four, <laughs> and they've got this house, and they're considering having their um, solar panels. Is, there still ben is it still beneficial for them, and what's the payback? How quick's the payback? Payback basically is between, say, five and seven years. Uh, you, you should always have a battery system with your panels, it is true to say the more panels you have, the more money you'll save. Um, right. So, sorry, I'm going to jump in. Go you say you should always have a battery system. Do things like council <clears throat> properties not have battery systems and just go straight to the grid? Right. Many years ago, there was a uh, a um, system that uh, the government offered to the general public to have um, six to eight panels, depending on the size of the house. Mm. Uh, the Big, big, big mistake people made was to um, be suckered in and to have the panels installed. What they didn't realise is that because most of the companies installing were not MCS, they couldn't get the feedback tariff. They couldn't get any money back on the uh, panels that being <coughs> installed. Um, since February, uh, the, the batteries are now zero VAT. So we can now install batteries on properties that have already got panels on them and still be MCS. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the One of the biggest problems we, uh, that we found is that um, when we, or we, if I approach a, a house that's already got panels on it that had them installed during this, this government grant thing, yeah. um, the paper normally isn't in order because so many cowboys out there. Yeah, I bet they throw um, them up. Oh, yeah. It's beyond words, the mess ups and so forth. We do all we can to basically uh, sort the systems out. We service a system. A service should cost you no more than about three hundred pounds. If anyone is being suckered in, out is that there, a yearly service? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it doesn't need to be yearly because it, it, it is. There's no moving parts. Mm. It's basically checking all the cables and so forth. If anybody out there is looking to have their solar panels cleaned, do not be suckered in by believing or being told you need a special solution. It's window cleaner and a mop. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. It's easy. My guys go up, they like squirrels off a ladder, 
I don't even hold on. I'm scared <laughs> of heights. I'm sweating bricks as, as I'm going up a ladder. <clears throat> Everyone feels me to so take the mickey. Fine, carry on. Um, but yes, so we've got the uh, solar business and the security business. Right, okay. Um, so how did you sort of, going way, way, way back, how did you get into this? Because was this something that oh you were boy. at school? Don't ask him. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't okay. ask him this. Right. This has right. now turned into a three-hour podcast. Right, okay. Um, many moons ago. <laughs> um, in my formative life, about uh, 10, 12 years ago now, um, I was in printing and publishing. Right. And imagine me as a slicked back, dark head, amazing person. <laughs> Sorry. I'll try. <laughs> Good <laughs> couldn't help. So I'm the first person to be self-deprecating. I think it's great fun. Um, I told you this is going to be an yeah, experience for you, didn't I? It's great fun. I have a laugh. Listen, laugh at yourself. Why not? Long story short, um, I sold a, uh, a marketing campaign to a security company. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I walked in wearing suit, shirt, tie. It was back in the day where everyone wore shirt and tie mm -hmm. all the time. Slick back, curly hair, dark, uh, black brogues, nice dark grey suit, shirt, tie, the whole works. Um, sold them the uh, uh, marketing campaign, new corporate image, identity, new brochure, everything. They loved it. Mm. Didn't expect to get a call back three and a half months later, asked me to come back and talk to them. I thought to myself, what is it about? Yeah. What, why am I here? And I, and I said... Uh, You've got everything. You've got a year supply. Yeah, no, no, no. Was there a we problem? Wanna, we want to talk to you. Okay. I was most gratified. They um, they basically said, we want you to join us to head our sales and marketing department. Wow. Because we like the way you work. We like the fact that you always try and inject some life, mm. some fun into whatever you do. Make people laugh. Mm. If you can make people laugh, you won them over. Absolutely. Laugh with people, and they they notice you. They they like you. They remember you. They remember yeah, you, etc. And so I joined the security company. Um, obviously, many moons ago, I knew nothing about the business. Mm. They taught me everything that I don't know, and uh, <laughs> and more. Um, and uh, yes, that was then. Now is now, and I've we've we've progressed on from. Basic CCTV, fire alarms, access control. Um, about four or five years ago, one of the directors of uh, we were doing a service on a client in central London, and the director said, uh, he, he, he said, My blasted gates don't work again. <laughs> I shan't use the word he actually used because of the broadcasting. <laughs> you can but, use uh, any word you want, we don't okay, care. Okay, well. <laughs> He used the <laughs> naughty word, yeah, and and he, he looked at me. He said, "Have you got anybody who can sort the gates out?" Mm. And I said, "Of course we have. Mm. It's access control." So I made a phone call, sent one of our engineers down, and we unjammed his gates. Mm. The gate business was born, right? And uh, we unjammed his gates. His business partner had gates. We put in new gates. We put in a new, a new access control system for him with the video intercom. Fob controls, keyless entry, the whole works on his new house. His neighbours saw us install it <laughs> and it proliferated. Um, over the past two years now, um, bollards have come into, into being. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and bollards are cheaper to install than gates. Do you know what so it means like, by bollards? Like, come out the ground. Come out the ground. Yeah, yeah, yes. like the security companies. Mm, that, that's um, it. Yeah. Like, you basically yeah. click, yeah. A, click, click a button thing, <clears throat> yes, click a fob. And the bollard rises out of the ground, yes. It comes up between uh, 500 mil, 670 or, or at 50 mil, okay. depending on how high your vehicle is. Mm -hmm. You can have a manual one, which you twist, and when it, come, when it comes up, it takes 78% of the effort out of the lifting because it's got a piston behind it. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Assisted lift. Mm -hmm. Or you can have a wireless bollard, which I mentioned to you several mm. times beforehand, or an electric bollard. Costs vary between just under a thousand pounds, just under two thousand pounds, and about five and a half grand, depending on the five and a half grand is depending on how much cabling is required. Mm. But uh, yeah, now is so, this one of those stories where someone said, "Do you do bollards?" and you went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. we do bollards." <laughs> because 
Because <laughs> it was the same with wooden gates, when it? Was it I'm a salesman. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> I'm not going to say no, am I? <laughs> the same with wooden gates. And uh, oh, yeah. I can't remember what it was you did, yeah, where you, someone asked the question, yes. yeah, we do that, and then you went yeah. back, we've got to make this. Yeah, I, I just, I, I went back to the office, and I, I said, you know, I'm gonna make, I made the phone with the office, and I said, said, we do access control. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, said, can we unjam gates? And they said, well, it's, a, it's a, an, an electromechanical motor, so we can service it, clean it, and so forth, and check the electrics. I said, it's jammed. And they said, okay. So they said, come on, let's go, let's go and see it. So <laughs> we went out and see it, and we figured out what was wrong with it. It was a limiter that had been pushed too far over. A limiter basically is, stops is, it. Yeah, yeah mm. it stops it. And the limiter had been pushed way too far over. It jammed into the tarmac because it was something jammed into right. it. And so we basically unjammed it. We took the gate off. The, the rail was twisted. So we put a new rail in, a new motor in, and uh, rehung the gates. New limiter. It works perfectly today as it did when we first serviced, well, first did it um, seven years ago. No. Nice. Oh, yay. <laughs> But and you, I'm shy. But you've drifted away from the uh, story of when they ask, do you do this? Do you yes. do that? So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 are you trying to get away from I it? Do, I, I do admittedly have a habit of saying, <laughs> yes, we can do. Because if I if I say, mm, not quite sure, we can't do, that gives somebody else the opportunity to go and get the business yeah. and steal the clients. And being in sales, as far as I'm concerned, um, something else I haven't told you, which is even funnier... <laughs> Yeah. Um, what do you think my nickname was in my early, in my formative years in sales? I don't know. Del Boy? No, Superglue. Right. Superglue. All oh, right. So you can't get, your, can't get rid of you. The phone was permanently, <laughs> permanently at my ear. Yeah. And people used to call me Superglue. <laughs> the, the reception stands, this is long before mobile phones when you have mm. messages on pins. Well, on, That's on all right. Rather, yeah. Ra Rachel does that about yeah. five times a podcast anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> the receptionist will stand by the door, look at me. And, and go. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm on the phone talking to a client, and she's it's and, and she literally she's got this this stick uh, with this pen with, with messages, and she'd slam it on my desk, and she would say, "Return some calls," because <laughs> I'd go one off the other, off the other, off the other, off the other, call off, call off, call. Because yeah. if you're in sales, you've got to make continual calls. You've got to. If you're not, you're wasting time. Mm. So you must have a sales background then. So you did you sort of. <laughs> How how did that come about then? How did you guess that? <laughs> I have no idea. Gosh, intuition. I like this female intuition. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. I think he's taking a piss, Rach. I think he is. Sure. Just walk on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, my dad was in sales. Um, I've been in sales as long as I can remember. I um, it's, it's an even even funnier story. Um, I left uh, school at uh, sixteen. With uh, five O levels, yeah, just about scraped through. Just, I took a job with Campari Leisure Wear in their admin department. How boring is just filing invoices? <laughs> oh my giddy aunt, yeah. Um, lunchtime one day, I thought to myself, um, I've all, I'm always told, uh, you know, you sit here and have your lunch, or go into the <clears> common room and have your lunch. No, I'm a nosy bugger. <laughs> And I could see there was a door on the side. So I thought to myself, I wonder what's behind that. God. Big glass door. So I, I thought, oh, I'll walk through it. I'm wearing, I'm wearing a nice suit, shirt and tie. I walk through it. Big room with glass cabinets everywhere. I thought, oh, this is nice. Very posh. Nice. <laughs> so I'm walking around. There's nobody else in the place. I carry on walking around. Hmm. My lunchtime, why not? Someone walks in off the street or big, off the big doors. And he's, he's looking around. So, oh, so I thought... I said, can I help you, sir? So I struck up a conversation with him. Yes. I was about 19 at the time. Yes. I was so cocky. It was terrible. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Honestly, embarrassing. And I, he, he, said, uh, he said, yes, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. And because I've been reading all the invoices as I've been following them, I knew all the products of yeah. my heart. So I just, I just literally, as I'm talking, I'm all, I'm all, I said, come with me, sir. I'm, I'm looking at the products, trying to find the right one. I didn't have a clue what I was looking at, just guessing as I'm going along. And I said, this is this is the T-shirt you're after, sir, and the matching shorts and the bag and so forth. It was like the cheap Adidas bags from years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, um, yes, you can buy these in a pack. I didn't have a clue if you could or not. I just made it up as I went along. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's a voice behind me. So I say, 
Gary, what are you doing? <laughs> yes? The uh, marketing manager has come, come out and said, no, no, you can see me in there. What are you doing? And I was told to get out. I was sacked the next day. <laughs> oh, this was. I was sacked the next day. And it was then that uh, when I told my family, uh, they, ju they just said to me, um, you need to get into You need sales. to get into sales because <laughs> you, you, clearly, you clearly enjoy it and like you, 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 yeah, you, you enjoy it. Mm. So, yeah, I got into uh, printing, publishing. No, I sold um, furniture for Hammond's, Hammond's, Hammond's uh, bedrooms. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Hammond's. Yeah. I was there for about 18 months. Hated it because it was just sitting in the office all day doing nothing and looking at looking at brochures and answering the phone and being very very tedious and boring. And that's, that's not, not you, me. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I've only known you for jumping about up and down on the bed, <laughs> really. Yeah. No, I'm I'm normally quite serious. Trust me. Yeah, I normally if I'm I I an average day for me at the moment. I make my first. I get. I've got a little office just in, inside Gravesend. Uh, behind a uh, another office, um, where about say uh, um, Harmer Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by the clock tower. Yeah, um, oh, and that, that imagine that in its day, Harmer Street. Oh my god, beautiful, wasn't it? I've, it would have been beautiful. I've seen the history. The yeah, I've seen the history. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. They used to have a theatre down the end of it as well. It's, you know where the call boy is? His, yes, historic. Wow. Yeah. Oh, really? If you look at the yeah. back of the call boy, there's a large wall there, and that was the theatre. And that's why it's called the Cool Boy because they're calling in the the stars ready to get on stage, sir. Honestly, yeah. I, you know the the, the um, um, another funny story. Um, I I, uh, I did some business with another security company um, in Wellington Street in Gravesend, mm. and I got talking to the director as I no no normally do, and uh, we went down to the uh, basement. And uh, I'd heard a uh, a rumor there were ghosts somewhere in Gravesend in pubs and so forth. Okay, I thought nothing of it. Mm. Um, and we had to clear out the basement pile of wood and rubble from one side to the other, and we were there quite late. And whilst we were there, Mark was doing the wiring. Yeah. Mark's a big guy. He's um, have you ever heard of a thing called CP in security, close protection, basically. Right. Okay. Diplomats have yeah, these yeah. big guys. Yeah, yeah. Them, one like that. Yeah, yeah. Guys, yes. Okay. Wouldn't really fit me. Would it? Would it really really <laughs> nice. Puny little me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> You'd be sitting there just talking. Yeah. To yeah. Him. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're, you're still. You're still. Keep him away. You're talking too much, yeah. please. Yeah. You're still clear him out. Yeah. <laughs> People used, to, people used to say, where would you find Gary normally? And the answer is, look for a room with donkeys with no hind legs. <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, now he's drifted off the story and I was Sorry. into this story. Sorry, I digress somewhat. Let's get back, right, Let's so get back to the subject. Basement, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're in the basement and um, it's getting quite late. And um, Mark comes up to us and says, um, say, come on, guys, enough of messing about. You know, leave the stuff there. And I'm looking at my colleague and I said, say, Chris, what was, what's he on about? And he said, I don't know. I said, Mark, what's, what's, you know, he said, I've, all, I've already moved that wood from one, from there to there. It's back there. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we had installed CCTV there. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. He's like, oh. Yes. Yes. I love a ghost story. Oh, this is so weird. We saw the wood being moved from side to side. By we itself. We saw it on camera. Have you still got the footage? No. This is years ago. Oh. <laughs> uh, you know, but on, so literally on camera we, being we picked up. We saw it being moved, you know, dragged along the floor. And um, we, we, the pub opposite. We, we, what was it called, the pub opposite? Oh. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Wellington Street, Gravesend, next to the bridge there's a pub on the left on the left hand side as, as you're approaching the bridge the guy in the pub he knows all about the stories about ghosts and so forth railway tavern railway I inn think, yeah possibly yeah i think there's a ghost there as well but does it he, sit by itself this pub yes it sits by itself in yes. the center there's a house next to it's it it's now a it's now a dessert place i believe you know one of those like creams oh, or something oh, no, yeah. creams creams is on the high street 
Uh, Cream yeah. Oh yes, you're, uh, you're right. But there's another one. Like of course that. I'm right. <laughs> yeah, there's another Honestly. one. There's another dessert place. It's the Railway Tavern it's near where the old council building used to be. Okay. I think I think that's the one you're on about. I might be wrong. Oh, in the middle. Because I'm never. I'm not quite sure where Wellington Street is, to be honest. As you come into Gravesend, there's a petrol station on the left hand side next to the first set of lights. It's literally on the corner. Right, okay. Creams is there. Opposite, Wellington yeah. Street's opposite. Oh right, so, you, so yeah, you're on about oh, the Jolly Drayman pub yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah that's that's yeah. my lo- that's so what right. I class as so my right. local still. <laughs> I've not lived in yeah. Grayson for years, but I still call that my local. You hit your head every time yeah. you go it's in there. It's very low. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. It's low. Yes, yeah. right, the okay, number of so, times. So Wellington point. Street is is that that street there? Yes. Right. Okay. So this haunted place is is near there. Yes. It's it's um it's it's underneath. It's opposite the pub. If you get, if you, as you, it's you, shops uh, there. It was like a hardware shop yes. there. Oh, I no. know it. That's yeah. that's where Tilly got her dancing. There used to be like a party uh, shop it. there, Next and they door. used to do Next dance door. stuff. Oh, and that's where there. Tilly got her dancing. Right, so it's, it's haunted yeah. there. Yeah, oh, okay. underneath. Yeah. Under, there, there's 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 underground rooms going right along. Well, Gravesend's oh. riddled with tunnels. Oh yes. Did you know that my mum worked at the Bingo Hall, which is the Regal? It was called Regal. I think there's a gym there now. Number 99, please come in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, oh, oh, where the Tesco So, is. New Road, yeah. Gravesend, used yep, to have, yep, yep. at the very end of it, um, near where Cash Converters is, oh, yeah. yep, right, yep. over the road, used to be a bingo hall. They never hall. have a change, you know. Sorry? They never have a change. They don't. They just convert <laughs> it. But they managed to convert it. Is it, uh, is it that building like, <clears> that looks like arched. a cinema? You can still see yeah. the entrance of it. Yeah, I know They were going to knock it down years ago, which is why they closed the bingo all down, but they never did knock it down. Mm. And now it's mainly a gym. Yeah, right? yeah. But they, when they shut the place down, uh, the builders came in to start clearing it out and they found tunnels there. And those tunnels mm. went all the way to the Thames, smugglers tunnels. No. Yeah. It's, 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 it's actually, uh, that's actually uh, quite amazing because... Uh, um, what I found out about Gravesend since I've, I've been living in the area, mm. the history. Mm. Appa- apparently, Pocahontas died, died there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Died came there. Into Gravesend and then went. Like, everything, <laughs> everything that <laughs> stops at Gravesend ends up dying. Oh, Do you remember that, that whale that was brilliant. in the Thames? Do you remember the whale that was in the Thames? Yes. Yeah. That died at Gravesend. Yeah, yeah. And they cut it up at the canal basin to test it. Did a post mortem. God, I'm, and honestly. Gravesend, I believe, used to hold the world record for most pubs per square mile. It used to have a pub everywhere, absolutely every corner. I, yeah. I, I, did you um, did you visit Gravesend during the storms in um, two eighteen? No, right? Because I remember oh. the eighty seven storm. No, uh, uh, the, um, when when <clears throat> these horrendous storms, I'm pretty sure it was it was eighteen or nineteen. Somewhere or other on one of my phones, I've got a video. Oh, I did. There Down the bottom of the hill where the Indian is, that was all flooded. Well, I, yeah. visit, I, I, I used to like... Yes, I remember. Everyone <laughs> say, yeah. I now remember it. I do, I do. I was there. No, I was going to say, if it's 87, there's no way I'm going to remember no. that. Is yeah. it? She was 13 at the time. She was born was, in 87. Born. She wasn't even born yet. What are you <laughs> like? What are you I know, like? I know, high five. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. <laughs> anyway, what was it? Naughty so boy. You were born in July 87. The storms were, I think, were September, October 87. October time. Yeah, you were so born in 87, so you're 13 now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, our, in our heads. Because <laughs> everything stopped at 2000 for us, didn't it? Oh, my God. Did it ever? Yeah. Well, I was yes. depressed when we went to see um, Top, Top Gun. Gun. And uh, I sat there and he went, oh, I'm really looking forward to this. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen it since blah, blah, blah. And I went, I wasn't alive when this came out, the first one. And he went, what the hell? <laughs> have you have you seen Top Gun Maverick? Yes, that's He's what we're on about. Good. Yeah, yeah, that's what. That's what we're that is a yeah. good she, film. She wasn't born when the first one was out. <laughs> Child, honestly. <laughs> anyway, where are we? Yeah, so sorry, tell us about your floods. Yeah. We digress yeah. yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is your fault. You floods, <laughs> floods, floods. Yes, um, I've got a video of, of this of this flood, and I'm on the I'm walking down to the front and yes, uh, yeah. where all the swingers are and so forth. Normally, where would I work? Um, well, swing the swing. Oh, I thought you said swing it. I think you're fixated, you know. Is this something you won't tell us? <laughs> no, Simon's not on there, uh, not on Mike. <laughs> Simon, on Simon, this is your opportunity to come out. <laughs> I'm sorry. And tell us what you're really <laughs> like. like said what is he really like? Is that he? Do you exchange keys to people at parties? <laughs> probably I down don't. that. I'm not being funny, but down that area, there do probably is know? loads of swingers. <laughs> Go on, yeah, so, shall yeah. we switch places and I shall interview <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> um, yeah so I videoed this, uh, the, the, this flood and I'm literally walking along 
And I, I wasn't watching what I was doing, obviously. <laughs> <clears throat> and then someone said, uh, sir, sir, um, I think you should be careful. Uh, what? I suddenly realised my feet were covered in water because oh, it was coming no. up pretty quickly. Only you would that know. Yes. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, listen, if I'm, if I'm in a zone, I'm oblivious. Yeah. I'm, I'm walking along the street and I'm, I'm, I'm on, if I'm on the phone even now, I'm like, you know, I'm... You could have someone step in front of you, do this, and you're uh, still like... <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe it, but I can be quite animated when I speak. <laughs> No one would ever guess. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I took a couple of videos of that. And even the recent storms, I think a couple of years ago, I got, I got uh, videos of um, a weir and a, uh, a lock, which is completely submerged. Mm. Wow. And I thought, wow. And there's kids swimming in it. Oh, yeah. Mm. Dangerous. Well, you used to do that as a kid, didn't God, you? God, his video, video collection's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got video. <laughs> this, this make you laugh. Oh, God. My, mother, my mother's 90. Yeah. And I have, a, I have video collections of her. Past five years, I'll, I'll literally um, I'll put my phone up on a stand, yeah? And uh, while we're talking, I'll quickly activate the record button on my watch so it's recording, and I'll tactfully <laughs> turn, I'll, I'll tap the camera thing, and I'll tap reverse. Yeah. So I'm videoing her without her even knowing oh. it because she's 90. And <clears throat> recently, I think recently, about a year ago now, a friend of mine's mother died, a friend of my mother. And she was saying, you know, I wish I had um, some recordings of my mother. Yeah, yeah. And how everyone was saying, what a shame, blah, 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 blah. And I, said, so, I said, give me a minute. I'm flicking through, flicking through, flicking through. I said, I said, I said check, your, check your WhatsApp. And she said, what? I said, just, just, just do it. Check your WhatsApp. And because her and my mum were, were very good friends, yeah. I managed to get them both at the same time oh. on video. Oh, She's brilliant. now got a video of, a, of her myself mom. and my, her mother and my mother talking and then giggling and so yeah. forth. I thought to myself, Aww. thank God I'm a nosy bugger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I take video, loads of videos, mm. loads of pictures and yeah. so forth. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, bless. Um, That's so nice. Yeah. I, filmed, I filmed my mum with a 360 camera. Wow. So she's just sitting there watching the telly chatting, but I put a 360 camera where you would sit next to her. So um, when you put it on, you're back in the room and she's there talking to you. That's cool, mm. isn't it? That's cool. Yeah. I try and do that every now and then. Mm. What's the... What's the um, the best kind of gift you ever got your mum? Oh my god! Oh. The best. Do you know? I know the best gift I ever got my mum. From your point of view, or from her point? From of her view? point of view. Yeah. From her point of view, right? It's um, a toothbrush. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because I went and got it myself. It was. I think it I think was Christmas. Was and so I went to <laughs> no, forty something. <laughs> no, I was just a kid, and it was the first time I'd actually gone to buy a present. And all I did, them, I think my sister sent me down somewhere. Sent me down to Perry Street with some money, and I went in this shop and I bought my dad birthday candles, and I bought my mum a toothbrush, and they both said that's the best present they've ever had Aww. because I bought it and bought it myself. Yeah, yeah. 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 My mother was ninety last year, and I could not work out what to get her. I thought so is it, this has got to be, this has got to be significant because mm. it's a it's a milestone. Yeah. She's ninety, not fourteen anymore. She's now ninety. <laughs> Actually, like she's fourteen. Um, so I, I'm literally. Driving myself mad, thinking, 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 thinking. And uh, suddenly it came to me. Um, week beforehand, I had um, found out, I rang around all their friends and said, right, fine, I'm organising a lunch for her and so forth. And everyone said, oh, don't do that, for God's sake, your mother doesn't like surprises. Blah, blah, blah. And I thought, yes, it's true, she doesn't like surprises. So I thought, okay, I've got a really thinking cap on. So um, I told my mum, that I'd ordered her present from Amazon. Right. Yeah. And uh, her birthday was on the Wednesday. On the Sunday, I rang her and I said, Mum, I'm really sorry. Your, your present's arrived. It's broken. I've got to send it back. Mm. So it's going to be a bit late. In the background, I'd heard her talking about the, the um, lunch that she'd organised for her friends, just the women, not the mm. men, just the women at a restaurant in, in Hatch End in North London. I thought to myself, I wonder. I, rang, I found out which restaurant it was, much research it took, mm. many, many questions, many, many phone calls. <laughs> I phoned the restaurant, 
spoke to the manager. And I said to him, when my mother arrives, gave him that name, everything else. I said, let him sit down, let him eat. When it comes to the, t- comes to the bill, you call me and I'll cover the bill. Aww. Yeah. And on the day in question, I'm sitting at my desk and it's, uh, it was booked for, booked for one o'clock. I thought, okay, two o'clock, quarter past two, mm. half past two, phone will ring. My phone did not stop that day. Oh. I'm thinking to myself, get off the phone, get off the phone. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I thought to myself, it's quarter to three, mm. ten to three, five to three. I thought myself, he's, he's forgotten. Yeah, he's yeah. forgotten. I thought, I've got to ring up. I rang up. He said, he said gosh, Gary, perfect timing. Mm. He said, your mother just asked the bill. I thought to myself, God, talk about lucky in yeah. the word for it. Mm. I covered the bill, 18 of them. Oh. Yes. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt. Oh, my God. Yes. My, the, the, the moths that threw out of my wallet that day were unreal. <laughs> Especially from a salesman, yeah. It only comes in, it doesn't go out. Oh, excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. If I had any feelings left, they'd be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> You're a salesman, of course you haven't got any. Well, listen, yeah, so I've been told. But, but um, Anne, which, who's, who's uh, my close friend Phil's mum, they're all, all, they've all been friends for over 50, 60 years. I'm friends with Jeremy, Gary, Phil, and so forth. All our mum's good friends, Deb is a good friend, so forth. I heard afterwards that my mum's face was a picture Aww. when she when she was given a silver plate and so forth, say, saying, happy birthday from your son, he's covered the bill. Aww. She rang me and said, and, and said, I thought you were up to something. <laughs> Bless her. So not thank you. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, of course you thank me, but I thought to myself, great, gotcha, Aww, gotcha. Lovely. But she's doing all right, she's healthy and everything. She does, she, she, um, teaches keep fit twice a week. That's unbelievable. Oh teaches. T- I mean, I she, where, is she ran right. this way? Is she grows She's in North London, Edgware. Right, okay. Oh, but right. she she goes, she attends water aerobics twice a week. Right. Teaches keep fit in her flats as well. She has a, a fixation about her posture. Mm. Her back is ramrod straight. Really? Wow. She stands yeah. up. She's the only one of her friends that doesn't Makes me want to see. Walker. <laughs> yeah? yeah. She goes shopping for three people in the flats where she go where she lives. Wow. I bet yes. they're all younger than her. Yes. <laughs> for at least ten years. <laughs> she comes back with these laden with Sainsbury's bags. Wow. Honestly, what what an amazing woman. Yeah. She she is my rudder. Aww. There's another word. She is my rudder. Bless. Honestly, what an amazing woman. My mother, wonderful. <laughs> 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 Sorry, so, slight madness there. <laughs> so, going back to your sales background and everything, how do you deal with like rejection? Because you must get that a lot in the sales industry. The Samaritans get a lot of phone calls. <laughs> I have a subscription with the Samaritans every night <laughs> to, to cope with my depression. So, I'm assuming that's a I couldn't give a shit kind of response. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I think it, it, is it almost like you build up your onion layers, as I call it? Like yeah, the first you have time you to get have here. a rhinoceros skin. Yeah. Got to bear in mind that out of um, the industri- industry average, is you only win between say fifteen and twenty five percent of the quotes you get. Going to ask that? It's going to ask that. Yeah. Um, I I I mean, I've done through B and I. Um, my God, we've got um, twenty eight pending projects at the moment. I received two. Referrals this morning. Mm. I've subbed this morning. Got another referral while I was there. I've given out two referrals since Thursday. Um, it's you've got to love what you do and yeah. really enjoy what you do and have fun with what you do. Mm. And uh, I don't take it seriously. Mm. I take clients very, very seriously, mm. very, very seriously. Everything has to be absolutely perfect. Mm. I mean, every installation is absolutely perfect. I will not stand tardiness. I will not stand discourteousness i will not stand swearing on site by any of our staff mm. um every single thing i i do spot checks on 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 sites if i'm in london i do a i get to get on the train and go to different sites i walk in i have a high vis and a hat in my, in my, in my boat with my bag and so forth and i just walk in put my high vis on put my hat on i look great in a high vis <laughs> not <laughs> You've seen my picture, haven't you? I'll, I'll yeah. put it on the chat. Yes, yeah. it's me in a shirt and tie and so forth, and a, and a, and a, and a hat <laughs> which doesn't fit properly. Ridiculous. <laughs> Honestly, I look, I look, I look like a you know what. I, you know, I can't say the word, but I look like that. <laughs> Ridiculous. 
Um, so do you remember the first time that someone, like you were in your sales pitch and someone said to you, no, thank you, and sort of just walked away? I panicked. Yeah. I absolutely cracked myself because I thought, myself, oh, my God, what do I say? What do yeah. I do? Um, um, I lost a sale. Mm. I did. Lost a sale. You learn by experience in sales. <clears throat> the one thing I've learned many, many years ago, um, I was mega high pressure. I was... I was literally, I'd sit down with people and I'd go on and on and on and on and on until they get sick and tired of me and they buy something just to get rid of me. No, <laughs> what, what can we buy, Simon? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, honestly, <laughs> it, 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 was, it, it was crazy. I was at high, high pressure. Now, I'm the complete opposite. I get praise and criticism in equal measure by clients saying to me, you don't need to keep ringing me. I know who you are. I know where you mm -hmm. are. We'll call you when we're ready. And they do, mm. and we get repeat business. Then I get clients saying to me, "Thank God you called me. Thank God you reminded me. I'd forgotten about that. That needs doing. Can you please do it?" Mm. Yeah. On the way here, are two people saying to me, "Forgotten to do that. Could you please organise it mm. for me?" Yeah, no problem at all. It's done. I did it literally in the car mm. on the way here. But you have to. Um, you've got to step back. As you get older and as you mature, you realise people do not like to be sold to. Mm -hmm. That's right. You have to. The thing, the thing is, the world is, a, is <clears throat> easy accessible now. Everything's easily accessible. <clears throat> so back in the day, they would only have to rely on you because they wouldn't know how to get certain things. Do you but, know what I mean? It yeah, was harder to source certain. Now, but you now can, you can anyone get can get anything. Delivery, can't yeah. you? So, it's so, so not... you know, you need to. The way of selling is a lot different. It's literally a mind bender. Uh, not a mind bender, what is it? A mind jogger. You're jogging their memory, basically. Oh, mm. I must get that. I must mm. get to that. To be honest with you, um, as, um, as a client said to me the other day, um, he, sent me, he, he rang me up and said, right, fine, let's get on with it. Let's do it. Cool, nice one. He said, he said, he said and Gary, well done for being restrained and not, not driving me mad about it. Mm. And I thought to myself, it's working good. I provide people with as much information as they need. I'm always available day and night, 24 seven on the weekends to answer questions. And I let people buy from me as mm. opposed to sell to them. Mm. And it goes down so much better. Mm. Mm. Um, I go into meetings and um, sometimes I don't say a word. Mm. I know you find that hard to believe. I know. I'm yeah. shocked yes. about that. No, I'm not having that. <laughs> yeah. I literally, don't say a word. Should we give him a task next B&I meeting to do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, it's my interview. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> yeah, cool. Right, do you have any advice for people that want to go into sales? Uh, you've got to love what you do. Love what you sell or just love selling? You've got to love what you do. Uh, if you if you're in sales, you can pretty much sell anything. Uh, you've got to know your product back to front and inside out. You've got to be confident in what you're doing in what you in what you're talking about. Um, you've got to be friendly, affable, amenable, um, and basically um, befriend people. Because can, go on. can you tell within the first sort of seconds, few seconds, if they're going to someone's going to buy yeah. or not? Yeah, you get buying signals. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't realise that until well, yeah. you know. Um, when I worked in the first security company, the, the governor brought his son in and said, can you teach me how to sell? I said, no. He said, why, why not? I said, he said, you work for me, you, you do. I said, I do work for you, but I've seen your son. Your son, he's a shrinking violet. He sits in the corner reading a book. Yeah. yeah. I said, you can't do that. Yeah. I said, how often have you walked into my office here and you've had to wait on the wait by the door for five ten minutes when I'm on the phone. Mm. You think I'm going to stop talking to a client because you're by the door? Forget it. If mm. I can get a deal here, you can wait. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the thing that because like when we do wedding fairs as well, <clears throat> you, I find that you have to really they they walk past. There's so many people at a wedding fair, and they do walk past you, and you have to get them within that split second. Otherwise, they're gone. And if you can get them within that split second and then draw them in with something, which we do with our little mm. codes that we have in our albums yeah, and yeah. our photos, then they're hooked. Then you can start doing your sales pitch. But you have to have that few seconds first of, 
I'm going to test the water. If you don't like it, you can go. But if you yeah. do, I'm going to draw you in a little bit. Yeah. And it's that that you can't teach, can you? Because you have to know yes or no, basically. Yeah. yeah well, you know, it's just the way they look at your stall. You yeah. know, you can tell. Yeah. You can tell. You can tell just by not even communicating with them mm. if they've already got a photographer and videographer. Yeah. yeah. You can just tell by the way they glance, you mm. know, and you know, oh, right, okay, I'll have a chat with them. Our brother-in-law, Dave, my oh, brother-in-law, he Dave, he yeah. was brilliant. He's a sales, he, well, he's a salesman, but he's, you know, he's been in the hotel industry for years and we used to have him help out because I used to have to film these things. So while I was filming, Dave would be on our stall and he's so funny. And every time he said, what venue are you getting married? And they say, you know, we're getting married at um, the, the castle or because, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, right, we've done there. And we have mainly. But then this this couple came up and said, where, where is it you're getting married? Oh, we're getting married in my dad's back garden. And he went, oh, we've done there. <laughs> <laughs> he was so used to saying it. And then he went, oh, actually, no. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we, we haven't been there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but but yeah, very it's... approachable. We get, we've got better over the years. When I first started, it was hard. It nerve hard. nerve wracking. I speak to everyone, you know me, but to sell it's, them I something. Think it's is... that fear of rejection. Do I know isn't you? It? Oh, <laughs> okay. Tell me I'm your life story now, please. You now. Yes. <laughs> So, 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 how did you first start in photography, Simon? Oh, goodness, you don't want to have my interview, do you? We have to get. No. Do I speak closer to the microphone like this? No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm having to adjust the volume because you're like this, and then you're like this, then you shout, and then you're not. But, but I think right. it's that fear of rejection that actually starts you off when you have that. God, I've got to go. You know, even at wedding fairs now, I have to really sort of psych myself up when they say, "Right, okay, the doors are open, people are going to come in." I have to sort of like stand there for about five, six minutes and just go right, okay what am i going to say what i'm going to do what mm. and you have to sort of almost psych it up this almost, is interesting just, uh... this is interesting oh <laughs> no no uh, no um i thought you're going to analyze me no 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 no, 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 no. <clears throat> um many years ago my dad um we we uh we were at this function and we had to ask everyone to move from one side of the room to the other because it was some sort of the, the, the reasons and so forth and i uh, said so could you ask them to move and uh, I said, so, excuse me, can you, he says, hey, Gary, use your voice. You've got a bellowy voice, mm. use it. <clears throat> so now you've heard me. If I go into, this is my normal voice, mm. yes. But if I'm going into a, if I'm doing a talk, mm. because sometimes I'll go into, into a meeting and there's a lot more people than I expect in, yeah. at the meeting. I go, go in, and I'm told I'm, I'm meeting two board directors. It's a board meeting, 20 people in there. Mm. I go, go, hi, my name's Gary. And, uh, you know, right, fine. I have got nothing prepared at all. So we're going to do an hour of Q&A. Uh, please take it under your ties. Jackets off. It's a hot day. I've ordered some food, some cold drinks and so forth. Q&A, anything to do with printing, publishing and so forth, which is my business at the moment. Please throw it at me. And uh, it's baptism by fire. Yeah. You have to throw yourself into it. And own the room. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And as you walk, and the last thing you can do is say, "Hello, I'm Gary, and mm. yeah, yeah. I'm happy Did to you... answer questions." And oh, don't please don't look at me. No, no, no. It's don't the look fact at me. that they'll remember that, right? If you come in yeah. there and you are confident and you basically, like you said, own the room, they'll remember <clears> that instead of someone sitting in the corner going, "Yeah, yes, I'm fine." And I think the worst thing you can do is write it down and read it. Mm. Oh, well, especially on our minute things, we do it. Oh like, my god. Do you make yeah. So just so everyone other? knows, Gary and I are in the same sort of networking group, yes. and um, we have a, we have a minute to um, read about our or talk about our business. And I just I don't even think about it. I wing mine every, every single week. You read it, and I, I wing it. You wing. I wing it too. I wing it. I wing it too. I had two minutes. So yeah. I, I just wing it. I had two minutes yesterday, and I just want wing it. I put a couple of bullet points, yeah. of things I wanted, to, you know, recommended referrals and stuff. But I winged it yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. This morning, I subbed at a, uh, a new chapter in Kings Hill. I subbed for, uh, for a brickie, yeah? And I read his pitch. I thought to myself, I'm already falling asleep reading it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you glanced at it and made it up yourself. I, I completely made it up. <laughs> yeah. I stood up and, I, I, and I, I, I said, guess what I want to do when I grow up? And look at me, kid, I want to be a brick. I want to be a house. I want to be a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so Simon, if you ever need someone to fill in for you, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And everyone's looking at me. I, I, I said, "And what does Rick do? He's a bricky!" And everyone bursts out laughing. <laughs> and, I, and after the meeting, two people approached me and said, "I'm going away next month. Can you sub for me, please?" <laughs> <laughs> god, it's worked. It's worked. Let's hope one of them don't do penis extensions. <laughs> 
penis. I want to be a penis. <laughs> it's growing. <laughs> My oh, blood pressure is growing. Oh my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, and you, there's, there's another side to you, quite a serious side, where you teach people that have got a learning difficulties, reading yes. difficulties. Do you still uh, do this? No. Right. I, I, I um, yeah, this was years ago. Um, because I love reading and I love the English language, I love vocabulary. I hate swearing, but uh, uh, there's always words you can use. Words are stronger than than any kind of violence. And I noticed, uh, this is many years ago, that uh, some people around me couldn't read because uh, um, I was a member of a club and there were some travellers there and some, there were some people there who were autistic and so forth. And they had dyslexia and they were trying to read a book and, and I just noticed they couldn't read. Mm. And then someone who taught adult literacy <clears throat> said to me, we noticed you do a lot of reading. Can you give us a hand? Mm. So I began to help people. And uh, I did it for about um, eight, nine years in the, wow. in the end. Um, never followed the rules. Mm. Never once. I thought, do me a favour. I, I, I know what I'm doing. I'll do mm. it my way. I'd sit opposite people who had dyslexia for argument's sake. And I'd watch their eyes. Mm. Because you can tell if someone's dyslexic because their eyes jump around. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd always tell people, eat and drink before you we have, we have a lesson. Because your brain needs food. It needs moisture, liquids, hydration yeah. and food. Yes, it needs fuel. And I'd try different colour film. Oh, yeah. 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 Because it helps them focus. Um, I taught the alphabet. I taught them to read. And there were various levels of uh, exams and so for qualifications. I'm dead proud that several of my candidates who had dyslexia were able to stand up and read from a paragraph they'd never seen beforehand out loud after I taught them from scratch. Wow. Yippee mm. for me. That's amazing. Dead chuffed with that. Mm. Yes. That um, is a really big achievement. Honestly, the, the kick it gives you mm. is better than anything. You, 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 you can't buy that. Mm. Mm. It's a real, a real, this is why it bugs me now whenever I see anyone who's having difficulty in any walk of life, you think to yourself, you can get better if you want to. You've got yeah. to find the right person to work with. Mm, mm. Absolutely. Has your friend still do that or is he retired no, now? We, we, no. we've, we've, all, we've all stopped years ago. Yeah. Because mm. it, it, it's draining. It's, yes. it, it's very, very, very I imagine hard, Just hard the thought work. of trying to teach someone to read just. It's well, draining, mentally draining. Well, for me. we know it from children. Yeah, you know, yeah. trying to teach mm. your kids to read and try and teach them. The I think the difference is kids like don't want to. Mm. You know what I mean? They're sort of they're a bit. You know, I want to go and play. Where mm. this adult is here because he wants to yeah, read. So that's slightly different. But yeah, I know where you're coming from. He's exhausted, it's, mentally it's draining. Just the, like uh, for example, our son, massive words, absolutely fine. It and is. He's like. Oh, I don't know what that is. I'm like, yes, you do, you do. It's it's easy, yeah. but it's easy for me because yeah. I know what they are. Yeah, but he knows what they are. He's just not fully concentrating. Oh, all the time. <laughs> I'm a nightmare. I'm a nightmare. So I'm, I'm very good. Yet. I'm very good at predicting. I, I know I'm dyslexic. I can read. I can read it every. You show me a word, I'll read it most <clears> of the time. You know, unless it's a really weird word. But then get me to read in a line. And visually, I struggle with it. Mm. Visually, I love big words. I jump down. I drop. I I come back. I read the same line, or I jump jump two lines, or my brain will try and predict what's. If my brain's in that yes, mood, everyone and does. it's not. My brain's not always in that mood, mm. yeah. but sometimes it is. Like you know, I read the um the B and I stuff yesterday. I read that fine. Yeah, yeah. But there, another day, yes. I'd be all over the place. Yes. Yeah. It all depends on how my brain is that Listen, at that time. You know, yeah. the the. <clears throat> You know, different from anybody else. Trust mm. me on that. Sometimes I can't focus on anything. Mm. Mm. I, 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 think, I think to myself, I've got to go out for a walk because I can't even see straight. Mm. Mm. I can't think straight, can't see straight. I know I need to work this out. I can't work it out. I, my hand will, will not uh, write. Mm. Um, my handwriting is like a drunk spider. Mm. I can't work out what I've written myself. Yeah, yeah I do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Is it that way? Is it that way? Yeah. Oh, God knows. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah, but I mean, I my handwriting with, is terrible. With mine, though, it's more of a... If someone's... Because I can read, and I love reading, like, books, and I, I sit there and I read, and then I say, Tilly, oh, I read this one, and we swap books, absolutely fine. But it's when someone says to me, you have to read out loud, then my anxiety gets in. I'm like, oh, my God, have I got to read out loud? Yeah. And then I think, okay, just just read it properly, and then my mind goes, no, you're not going to do this, and then it just starts messing up from, yeah. like, day one sort but of I thing. But like, oh. I can't bear watching her type or text. Right, because she does it as fast as she can. <laughs> no, but she I'm does it as fast as she can. <laughs> she goes type, 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 delete, 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 delete. <laughs> type, 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 delete, delete, delete. She deletes fifty percent of what she types <laughs> no. because she's typing it's too fast. fast. If she just slowed down, it's too fast. If she just slowed down. She'd get there quicker. Yes, drives me it, it, that's mad how watching that. My brain works. It needs to get all this information out. Then I go back and go right. Okay, we can add this in. We can. No, do you, it. you, you, <laughs> no, it's not. I, listen, I, I. I <laughs> I, I, um, my, fa- I am my father. My father died in 2009 of cancer, even though he didn't smoke. And I find so many of his mannerisms I've adopted. Mm. And my mother said to me ages ago, she heard me on the phone talking to a client because I, I took a phone call on, on the weekend. And she said to me, you sound like your father. <laughs> and I said, I, I know, I know. My father was very exacting. Uh, over 200 people attended the funeral when he died, wow. and we were stunned by this. And everyone's and people I've never, never even met. Mm. Did, like, who the hell are you? And he helped. He helped everybody. Mm. He helped everybody. He was one of the early networkers, right? Because he knew everybody in every company. Mm. He 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 knew the cleaners. He knew the directors. He knew the d- d- delivery drivers, receptionists. Mm. He said hello to everybody. Yes, great. Mm. The one thing he taught me was how to speak clearly, mm. how to project your voice, how to be heard, and clarity is so important. Mm. Communication is so important. That's why I can't talk very clearly <laughs> as now. <laughs> <laughs> He's all serious, then he ends up doing an audio. We're sort of like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so back to your business then. So it's been going for how <clears throat> how long? Did 20 you say years. twenty years? And how many people? Years. How many people have you We've got, got working um, for you? Nine staff, uh, three, four people in the office, and five engineers. But you love a good in- interview as well, don't you? Um, to be honest with you, I don't interview because oh. it drives me around a bend. <laughs> we're, we're going. Hello, do you want to work? No, no, I, I, I see. <clears throat> I can't stand rubbish. I can't stand. Uh, we have. Um, Standard interview replies is what you're going to say. Well, no. Electronic security is, is a specialist side. We're not electricians. Um, if I send a, a uh, one of our engineers out to a gate system to do a diagnostic on it, a, an electrician would charge you in the regions of um, 100, 150 quid. Our call out is, is uh, between 225 and 275. For an hour and a half, we would test every part of the electronic security system. It's got specialist circuits, mm-hmm. which an electrician wouldn't have a clue how to look at, how to test. Um, the one thing that bugs me it has happened to us in the past year, just recently one, when an engineer who we've we've employed, we've trusted, we sent to a job, and the engineer has the audacity to approach the client afterwards, give the give the client his personal phone number and say, come to me directly, it's cheaper. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. What they don't realise is we have personal relationships with our clients mm. and our clients will ring us afterwards and say, guess what your engineer did? Mm. Right. Yeah. Those people don't last very long. No, no. I can imagine. But the our business is incestuous. Mm. Everyone knows everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And you hear very, very quickly as to who's gone where, who's gone where, blah, 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 who's done what and so forth. But myself and my colleague, Afi, um, we've been working together for donkey's years. We each know each other very, very well. Um, we rip the backside out of each other all oh, day God. long. We have a <laughs> cracking laugh. Um, he's uh, five foot seven. I'm six foot five. Mm. Yes. On a good day. <laughs> <laughs> In stature. And personality, be quiet, you. So like, Siri's always interrupting me all the time. What's it found? I want to know what's... Oh, I don't This know. is what I found, it said. <laughs> After six foot four. I'm really interested. <laughs> Honestly, I'm really interested. Behave. <laughs> Keep it clean. 
Honestly, she's I want to know what it said. This is what I found. It must have heard you say Siri you, you, or something. You, you wouldn't believe how many times I'm, I'm in a meeting and, it, it, and it, it, it pipes out with an answer or, <laughs> or words. And I say, what was that? I had no idea. It's my watch talking This is to what me I found. You're lying about your hide. <laughs> uh, I'm on a train the other day yeah, and um, coming into St Pancras and um, my mobile is in my jacket pocket and... Uh, um, my watch rings, mm. yeah. So I, I'm talking on my watch, and people are out there and they're going, "What is he talking? He's, he's, he's actually talking to his watch. <laughs> my watch is talking to me." Feature on Night Rider. Yeah, yeah. Go, Hi, uh, I'm Michael Knight. <laughs> Remember that? I used yes, to love Night yes. Rider. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> that wasn't you? the joke. <laughs> That's still not it. I can't sing anyway. What was the tune? Yeah, brilliant. Honestly, yes. And and who who was the actor in that? David Hasselhoff. Yes. He 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 modelled his hair on mine. Did he? Is that what you had? You had a hair like that. Oh boy, did I have hair like that? My hair was curly and. Years ago, when it was a fashion to have straight hair, guess what I did? Oh, you didn't. Well, I, I didn't straighten this one around. I blow dried my hair to the end of distraction, and and um, I was the epitome of. Remember the uh, the commercial before? Is she or isn't she? Is she or isn't she? Yeah, is, it? is she or isn't she wearing silver green hairspray? <laughs> <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue. <laughs> yeah, remember that? Sorry, I drifted you off of being on a train and <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Dark rescues again. Right, same Michael Knight or Knight Rider. Yes. Go on. Uh, um yes, yeah, so um uh what was I saying before? I don't know. I Two you. people are watching you talking to your oh, phone. Yeah. yeah, and uh yeah, so this thing it, it it's an Apple phone, it, it is always interrupting me because um if I say um I'll do it let's try it now. Um, <clears throat> Siri, uh, call Simon Burridge. Oh no! What do you mean, Calling that prick? Simon Burridge, Cherrywood. <laughs> calling that arsehole Simon Burridge <laughs> my phone is now calling Simon Burridge literally yeah. as we yeah it is yeah it's moment. calling so, me see, yeah I think people have witnessed uh, Siri yeah. before <laughs> no, well, I oh, and I usually go oh it's Gary I won't answer that <laughs> <laughs> he's got a message come up yeah. okay. do you want to answer this prick's phone call <laughs> oh nice <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> this okay, no. this viewers is why I have a subscription with the Samaritans. <laughs> Could you well, press the red button for me? Yeah. yeah, he's still calling. So can oh. you? Yeah, yeah. yeah press the red. Button. He, he doesn't know how to get the watch yeah. to stop it. Oh no, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, Sorry, it should come up on here like that, but, but it doesn't always. Yeah, <laughs> so it's not as reliable as, as, it, as, as it claims to be. Apple, right. take note. Have we covered everything yet? Cause I'm exhausted. <laughs> So, I've only been here five minutes. No, you'll be surprised. You've probably been here an hour. Let's have a quick look. But that's going to take me half an hour. <laughs> You've been, been an hour and 20. An hour and... Well, well no, you've got here a little late. bit late. A little bit late. Yes. So we've done an hour. So we've got Eight. another hour to go. <laughs> Are you looking forward to it, viewers? <laughs> Anything else you want to cover, Gal, about your businesses? Oh, wow. Okay. Um... Let's 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 talk about the uh, solar panels. I, I like the say, idea of solar, solar panels. The future, mate. It really so, is the future. Do you think they would get them on cars? Yes. Eventually. The problem is they're very hot on roofs, aren't they? They're very hot to touch solar panels, especially in the summer. Mm. Yes, they are. Uh, not as hot as you may think. They, but they are glass. The one thing that I'd like you all to think about, in all seriousness. Yeah. Seriously. Um, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> um, we. Uh, are looking to launch a chain of um, EV chargers, national. Right, okay. Um, we have um, funding, and from, I think it's either, either going to be the 1st of June or 1st of July, we're going to be installing EV chargers at blocks of flats at no cost to the residents. It's fully funded. And basically, it will, it'll operate as a pay-as-you-go service. You put your credit card into the machine and you charge your car up. The uh, EVs will be either 3.5, 4 kilowatt, 7.5, 22 kilowatt, or 50 kilowatt. 50, okay. 50 kilowatts are currently only used by Tesla. Um, they do not damage the car's battery. 
How much do you reckon the car's battery it will cost? A re- replacement. Oh, a lot of money. Yes. A lot, most of the car. Yes, it's a, been between half and between um, sixty and eighty thousand pounds. <laughs> Depending on the value of the car, it's probably at half between half and two. Pounds. And what's the life on those? Um, it should be. Um, it's sixteen thousand cycles. Charging up. Fifteen 16. years. Oh, right. 15, fifteen years. That's a lot of money for fifteen years. It is in a way, isn't it? it? Is. But the weird thing is, Kia have just bought out their big car. I forget mm. what it's called, but it's their big monster. It's it's a six seater. It's got a hundred kilowatt battery in it. The next car down only has a seventy five kilowatt battery in it. Now you'd expect the extra kilowatts. You're going to get a lot of mileage. Mm. How many miles do you think you're going to get from the extra kilowatts? Probably not much based on the weight of it, if it's a big car. 20 miles. Yeah. Oh, my God. 20 miles? Yeah, but it's a bigger car. More weight. Yeah, but... It weighs almost two tonnes. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, my God. With regard to solar panels, the um, solar panels are one metre by 1.7 metres. Batteries are 3.5 kilowatts, 6.5 kilowatts, 9 kilowatts, and up to 19 kilowatts. You can get multiples, you can build up and so forth. It's always advisable to install batteries <coughs> with solar panels every time without shadow of a doubt. In winter time, yes, solar panels do work. There's less light and solar panels work when you uh, when you're uh, when they're facing east, south, or west, not north. Right. The number of houses I see have north panels. I think really, so. I've never noticed it's a north facing one. No, they try and lever them up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, right. To face the sun. And what's the angle? Thirty between thirty three and thirty five degrees. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the beauty of having a battery system with your solar panels is if the batteries can be programmed to download cheap energy at one third of the daily rate at night time. It's called off-peak downloading. Ah, right. So oh, they're okay. taking it from the grid and charging themselves up and then using it. That's a good idea. Just like a mobile Didn't phone. Didn't think about it being that way. I just thought about it storing the uh, solar panels usage. We okay. have um, we have clients whose houses, you know what a dormer is? It's an extension on the yeah. roof. Yeah. yeah. Right. They have no room on the roof at all to put panels in. We've installed 20 and 30 kilowatt batteries, literally a bank of batteries. And every night they download and fill up the batteries. Mm. And their electricity bills plummet from, say, £400 a month down to £35, £40 a month. Really? Just by having the batteries and no solar panels? Because they, every night, they don't use energy during the day at all from the grid. That's amazing. Mm. They just fill it up at night time at a third of the cost. Yeah. So, of course, bill's going to go. See, I didn't realise that. I've. In a way, I just thought the rate was the same. Does it, does it depend who you're with? Um, you, you, most of the uh, providers now, your daily rate normally is going to be between, so we say, 32 and 38p right. uh, per kilowatt hour. Nighttime rate is between, say, 7p and 9.5p. That's amazing. That yeah. is a ma- I know it's only we're talking it's pence, but if you, you do you're that talking on pence daily times rate, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the. Wow. The number of people who have dubiously signed up and said, okay, we'll install it and so forth. We've got a bit of spare cash. We'll install it. Afterwards, they say, wow, mm, bills yeah. come through. It's, it's, it's 48 quid. Mm. It used to be 400 quid. Yeah. And the other thing is power cuts. Sorts that problem out. No, I suppose. It doesn't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it, I no. was believing Can it not be. feed from there? It does. It does. You have to have a, a, a special circuit installed so you can actually go up to the up to the power and switch. It's like a big, a big red twisty yeah. button. It's a separate circuit. It doesn't power the whole house. If mm-hmm. anyone out there has been told it does, it does not. So where would the energy go? Why doesn't go it power? Um, I need to ask. I've got questions, <laughs> many questions. <laughs> right. So I understand that it needs to have a separate switch to know when there's a power cut or not. Mm-hmm. Um, my first question is, when the power comes back on, does it affect it being switched over? Or does it just stay on, on the battery until you switch it back, I imagine? Power comes back on, if power comes on, you have to switch the circuit switch it back So you on, have right. to physically go Okay, that, right, so okay. if then we're then charging the, the power up at night at a low cost, and then we're providing power to your house, your whole house in the day, 
How comes it's limited when there's a power cut? Sorry. You said, you said, Your Honor, <laughs> that um, you said that if there was a power cut, You'd use this switch, you'll switch mm. over, but it wouldn't power the whole house. Mm. Why is that when it's powering the whole okay. house in normal use? Right. Your solar power comes in from the panels, it comes, it goes through the inverter and into your mains supply. Yes. Your main supply has two loops. Yes. Loop at the bottom well, and uh, loop at the top. Ground for ring, ring, and ring. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Two rings. Okay. Because um, if you were to power the whole house, um, you would need grid to supply the whole house your batteries can only store a certain amount of energy if they were connected up to the whole house yes from that from that those single batteries mm. yes you you need to have loads its own its own um uh you see the cables outside in the street yeah yeah right mm. fine you mm. see the size of the cables high voltage mm. cable well, high, yeah, high yeah. voltage cable mm. You wouldn't have that in the house. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I understand what you mean. So, what you're saying is you're charging these batteries up, but in the day when you're using the power, you're only powering one ring probably downstairs. If there's a power cut. If there's a if there's normal day, then you can use you, you can use anything in the house you want to. Uh, I've got clients that have got so, so sorry, my, I've got another question. Okay. So I'm touching you up at the same time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello. Um, so you are still drawing. You're still drawing electricity in the day. No. From the batteries. If you have, for argument's sake, dishwasher, iron, toaster, oven, oven. everything on simultaneously that's drawing. Uh, three point five kilowatts, seven kilowatt, nine kilowatt, blah 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 blah, blah yeah. and it's bouncing up. Mm. Your batteries, you have three point five kilowatts, six point five kilowatt, nine point five kilowatts. If your if the draw is more than the batteries have in their store, yeah. you will then draw. Blimey. It took a long time, didn't it? <laughs> a long time, <laughs> and we, it's the only serious bit we've got to. <laughs> Right, so they're going to be serious. Go on, no, the batteries again. So if okay. they draw, yeah, but that's where I'm coming from. So if they do draw that in normal circumstances, that no power cut, you're going to drain that battery, but you're not going to drain that battery because then you're going to have the day rate going into the battery when you yeah. were saving right. money on the low oh, night, night rate. rate. Well, that's yeah. where I'm coming from. Right. We normally, uh, I normally, because it's normally my job to educate people that if you use your oven first, you a dishwasher next, your washing machine next, and keep the the, the drain down or under a certain level, you will not need to get take from, from the grid because yeah. it will literally take from the battery only. Mm -hmm. And this is my... Sorry, I'm back mm. again. But this right. is my point about a power cut. I don't go, oh, there's a power cut. Quick, stick everything on. It's, you would have thought you, you, that you, battery you, you, would have... But, but you see, again, because the house... Uh, has a larger draw than 6.5 kilowatts, it can't feed the whole house. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, 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 an LED light draws less than a, than a halogen light. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. An oven by itself draws less than 6.5 kilowatts. An iron draws less than 6.5 kilowatts. A washing machine by itself is less. Mm -hmm. If you had them on all simultaneously, the battery itself, if you have three or four batteries combined, yes, no problem at all. Have it all at the same time. Mm. But that's when you get expensive, when you have several of them. Mm. If you've got one or two, you have to have, uh, you have to pace yourself. Mm. As long as you pace yourself, you could, you'll, you'll use the power that's been stored in the battery. You won't need to take from the grid. So in a power car, if you've got a power cut you've then flipped the switch and you said you get limited you power. get you, you get you normally get your lights alone right. or your oven and a couple of lights right okay i was going to say where yes. does it go to yes. where is the and even when there's to? not a power cut in a way that's all you've got in that battery capacity so you charge it up of a night but that's all you've got is the same amount yeah. as you right. then, then the grid starts battery, feeding it in the day yeah, yeah, the grid yeah, yeah, yeah. the grid is the, feeding the, the battery the great in the day. thing is is that the larger battery you have, the more energy you can save. Of course, yes. yes. Storage, yes. And the again, great thing is, because batteries can both um, send and receive, there's two different circuits in them, mm. you can be drawing power as well as storing power. Exactly, mm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
And there are clients basically that don't take from the grid at all. Mm. Yeah, depending on the size of their battery yeah. and how many mm. they got. Yeah. So, so do you have solar panels then? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we have batteries. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have batteries. Right. How many okay. batteries do you have? Three. Three oh. batteries. How much were those batteries? Can I ask? You can. Go on in. Not gonna How much were those batteries? <laughs> no, we, we have the equivalent of three batteries and it's the equivalent of 19 kilowatts. 19 kilowatts. So okay. will you get through a day with 19 kilowatts without we, feeding we, your day rate we, of energy? We've we figured out a way basically to... Uh, we've got a tent in um, the garden. <laughs> no, t- we we, um, we just figured out a way to, to run up on everything. Um, simultaneous. Um, not, no, no, we, we, we do... Not we, simultaneous. We, 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 we pace things. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. We pace Sorry. things. Yes. Simultaneous. All together, Would you like yeah. help with your speech this morning? I can teach you. She's really good at getting her words te- wrong. <laughs> this, is, well, this is one of her sayings. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, that, that's one of her sayings. Have you read that? Do as I no. Do, don't do as I do. Do as I do as I don't do. <laughs> okay. So it's basically saying, "Don't copy me and don't copy me." Okay. <laughs> that is so the don't uh, copy me. that is the do what I say, not what I do line. But yeah. that's her version of it. Is your name Raquel? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, or Rachel Burridge. <laughs> right. What, what was we talking about? We're, is there an indication on the battery so you know how much you've used? Yes. Right. Okay. Batteries are on on a serious note. They're very they they are fantastic. There are indicators on the outside as to how full they are and how empty they are. You have an app on your phone where you can judge how uh, how much energy has been used, how much you've paid, how much your bill will be. Uh, what you use at night time, what you use during the day, your usage, each um, <clears throat> each uh, machine in your house. Uh, I can't think of what the white goods are called, but uh, washing machine. Um, but there's, there's, there's a, a name for them. Um, the app will tell you basically what your machines use, what your dishwashers use, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, okay. yeah. at any given time of the day, mm-hmm. and you can gauge your usage to use it when you want to use it. And many many clients now buy a battery they have the have it installed first of all and then six months to a year later they buy another battery and, and add to the battery and then it add it again uh it's called future proofing mm-hmm. you have for argument's sake so the um, old ones that get older but you still got backup not so much that they realize they need more energy yeah mm-hmm. and okay. the, the solar panels only can only produce yeah so much and as they can afford to, they add another battery. In parallel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We've got other p- pictures of houses. They've got four or five, six, six batteries. Yeah, all mm-hmm. in parallel, I imagine. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so um, then, then do they like recycle the old ones then? Do you sort of like take when they get old You enough, can just remove it just and then take it replace, out and it, replace yeah. it. Yeah. You don't yeah. even have to replace it, I imagine, do you? you just remove it. It's, and the, it it's, if anyone says to you it's difficult to install a battery, it's rubbish. It's two plugs. Mm. Plug in, plug out. Done, finished. Mm. That's like it takes 10 maker. minutes. <laughs> I imagine they're quite expensive, though, aren't they? They're not cheap. Mm. Um, they cost normally, you say, between two and 3,000 pounds for a 2.4 kilowatt battery. Mm. A 6.5 is around three and a half, four grand installed. A 19 kilowatt battery is going to set you back in the regions of about between, um, six and 7,000 pounds. They are well, well worth every penny. And the payback seven years? Between five and seven years, depending on usage. Um, and got, you, sorry, is it, it, they just connect to one ring, like we were talking about, or do if, they connect if, to if, both? If you're, if you, um, we, we do have some clients that do have uh, a, um, a power cut circuit installed. On both, or just for no, both? For I, both? I, honest, honest yeah. to God, um, I think um, that's only ever been used twice. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. Because the power system in the UK is so reliable. Oh, yeah. I don't even mean that. Like, no, used. I don't even mean that. But the battery is connected to the power of the whole house. Oh, yes. In normal circumstances. Oh, God, listen. Yeah. We, oh, but what you're on about is when you use that switch, it's only connected to one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, okay. But the, the, yeah. um, the clients that have, every client has batteries. We don't yeah. have any clients that just have, have, have soda bottles. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God, thank God, we never, ever get complaints mm. of the system doesn't work. Um, yes, systems have faults. It's all about how quickly you resolve the faults. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, we get, thank the Lord, 
loads and loads of people who refer us to friends, family, neighbours and so forth. Yeah. Because you ask someone to come over for a coffee or for a meal, it's a talking point. Mm. Look what we've got. We've got solar, we've got batteries. Mm. How the batteries work? Is it, is it true they reduce the bills? And everyone's so proud. They say, look at our new bill. It's only 40 quid. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Last yeah. month it was 350 quid. And yeah. Was, wow. Mm. God. Right. So you've got this couple that's come to you. They're interested in having solar panels put on with a battery. Mm. They haven't got any extra money. Is there any payment plans that will cover the cost of this for the, for the time? You can take out finance for solar energy, um, not by the government. There are a couple of companies out there that can organise finance for you. If your religion states that you can't um, take out finance with interest, you can take out interest-free finance uh, via myself. I can organise it for you. Your religion? Um, Muslims can't pay interest. Really? Yeah. They can't they can't do any kind of finance that pays interest. Never so know. it's interest free finance. Oh, you'd like to meet me every day. Yeah. Uh, we ha- I have a lot of uh, Muslim clients that I work with regularly and they're not allowed to pay interest on finance. So it's interest free credit. So mm-hmm. can anyone have that interest free yes. credit? Mm. I can organise that, no issue at all. It's more expensive. Mm. It is, there's no question, it's more expensive. Uh but um yeah. And if someone says, for argument's sake, they want to have a big system, can they organise it over 15 years? Yes, you can. Mm. Um, but it's, it's organised at an interest, interest rate, but not everyone's got, should we say, to nine and £12,000 hanging about. Mm. So you can have a system installed. And um, I've got people who are paying 250 quid a month or 150 quid a month for the next 10 years. Mm. Or the next five years or 15 years, whatever it is. And that will still be cheaper than their normal... Oh, it's, it's, oh my God. God. That's what I'm trying to say. So in a way, what they're saving on their electricity bill a month, they're paying paying off anyway. Yeah. So... Well, it's probably even the cheaper. The beauty is... The beauty is... Now, this is where um, Clever Dick here comes in. Um, well, no, no, you see, I'm not your Mr. Average. I will say to a client, before we, before we even discuss any kind of... What they would do, what it would do for you. Um, average average installation is going to cost you between nine and say twelve to fourteen thousand pounds. How do you intend to pay for this? Mm. Let's get down to brass tax before we even talk about anything at mm-hmm. all. Yeah, because otherwise, if you can't afford it, there's no point talking there's no, about yeah, it. Mm. Yes, great believer in that. The gates for any kind of installation, mm. and they go. Ooh. I said, listen, um, if you haven't got the money in your account, because not everyone has. I can organise finance for you. Um, we could bring the payments down to say one hundred and seventy pound a month. And they go, can you? Yeah. Well, yes, we can do that. Mm. We're just finishing paying for one of the cars. Yeah, we put that on and have it. I can have it. I can have it installed week after next. With payments will be about one seventy, one eighty, spread over fifteen years. The beauty being, if you're due to inherit in two, three, four, five years' early. time, you can pay it off early, yeah. and you only pay interest on the amount that's outstanding for one month. Right, I see. Okay. Yeah. It's not 10 years worth of interest, no. mm-hmm. it's one month's interest. That's it. Yeah. How wonderful is Can that? Can you pay big lumps off every now and then? Yes. Mm. And the number of people who go, yeah, we'll have that. Mm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Because we know fully well that uh, once it's paid off, it's free energy. Yeah. 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 Sun, it's free energy. Yeah, absolutely. What could be better for you? Yeah. So where yeah. do you think the solar market is going then in the future? Where do you see oh, it going? That's a good question, Rachel. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's just going to explode. Um, Not literally, I hope. No. It's, <laughs> what's the dodgy battery? <laughs> there have been in the past, trust me. There have been. For, many, for you guys, you had to deal with some. No, no, no. Oh, okay. we, 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 we only, there are several batteries in the market. There's Give Energy, there's GrowWatt, there's Pylon Tech, there's Fox. We will only install um, Fox and Grow What. Give Energy are uh, uh, coming up very, very, very quickly. Last year they were rubbish. This year they're very, very good. They're improving. Um, the big difference is that the batteries last year, a lot of them, you had to contact the, the engineers actually with the manufacturers to calibrate the battery from the house and from the suppliers and get them to connect to work properly right. for the software is downloaded. Yes? Right, okay. Now, you can basically dial in, as long as you're an authorised installer, you dial in on your computer, 
uh, you, you get a code number to basically, once you're actually authorized, code number to, to, to dial into the main computer and you can calibrate the, the, the battery on your laptop yeah. and it does it all by itself. Wow. And we can do it within a couple of hours. Yeah. Installations normally take between one and two days. We're starting one on the 4th of July that's going to take three days because it's, it's um, 25 panels and three batteries. Wow. It's a monster. It's mm. ground mount. We've got, do, we've got to do foundations, the whole works. Um, but the, the beauty being with the batteries, they're improving all the time. If you use a cheap battery, please don't go cheap. Mm. You, will, you will regret it. We only install tried and tested equipment. We don't get problems with it. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. We do not get problems. The batteries have warranties of 15 years. The panels have warranties of 12 years. Yes, if there is a problem with a battery or the panel, we'll just replace it. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. There's no question. We'll come and inspect it. We'll test it out. We'll remove it put in, a, in, in a new one. Um, the systems are designed to work seamlessly. Um, some people have shading issues on their houses. They've got a tree leaning over. Mm. <clears throat> Please, people out there, beware. Your system will not work if it's shaded. Mm. Yes, we'll have to have a bit of tech equipment on there. I'm not going to go into all the techie stuff now because it's techie. Um, but uh, 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 you will need to have a bit of equipment attached to the back of the panel to make it. It works like independent suspension on the car. Um, if your panels are installed, it's called in series or in string. Uh, it's one string, basically. It means one cable is going around, all of them connecting, connecting them up. Mm. If you have two, two planes, two pictures in the house, you've got two strings, one that side, that one that side. Or if your house is south-facing, but one string covering the whole of the south facing. If you have an area that's shaded, um, you will have a, a bit of equipment called a Tygo. Tygo is a manufacturer, and the Tygo basically will, will make each panel work independently. Right. If it were, if it, had a, if it had a voice, it would say, I'm shaded at the moment, but you guys can carry on working. Mm. Right. I'm okay. shaded. I'll be, I'll be fine once the sun goes over yeah. and that tree's out of the way. But until then, you guys carry on. Mm -hmm. I can't work at the Shut moment. Down. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's very, very, very clever. Mm. My guys who are the installers, um, chief installer, he's 24 years old. Wow. And he's been brought up on solar. He's been doing solar since he was 16. Mm. There's nothing he doesn't know about it. Mm. I mean, he's phenomenal. We get on like a house on fire. He takes the mickey out of me and vice versa. Mm. Brilliant fun. His father runs the admin section. His father used to be in finance. He's a regulation man to the, to the adenoids, mm. to the hind teeth. Mm. Um, everything. Um, you've heard of ISO 9001? Mm -hmm. Right, fine. MCS is the soda equivalent. It would normally take a company between four and six months to gain MCS. It took Chris six weeks. Wow. He, him and regulation, he just, he has a phenomenal brain, mm. phenomenal brain. He achieved it in six weeks. Every single thing we do is regulation, regulation, regulation. Mm. Mm. We're asked time and again, can you just do this? Can you just do that? Sorry, sir, we can't. Can you, uh, I bought the kit. Can you install it for me? Sorry, sir, we can't. Mm. Everything is done absolutely to the book properly. It carries warranties, guarantees, etc. Mm. And I'm very proud of that. Mm. I really am. And I, um, yeah, it's phenomenal. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Well, that's a perfect way to end it. So do you I wanna, knew you were going to do that. Do you want to mention both <laughs> companies? We're now finished now. <laughs> Goodbye, viewers. Do you want to mention both companies? And the details, how to contact you. Okay. Because that's going to um, take another half hour to join yeah. you. Um, Here we go. The uh, electronics company or electronic security company is BA Security. My mobile number is 07399-648-423. BA Security, I'll repeat that. 07399-648-423. 
My email address is garyp at basecurity.co.uk. The Soda Company. Do they have a website, BA Security? BASecurity.co.uk. Right, okay. Thank you. And uh, the Soda Company is Eco Energy Install. Best number for that is 0734 0066 939. I'll repeat that. 0734 0066 939. If you ring the office, it's be engaged. <laughs> 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 because we are, thank God, very, very busy. So I tell everyone to ring my mobile, get through much quicker. Um, we we do have, we, we've taken on three staff recently and the phone is still engaged. Um, thank God we, we get a lot of referrals, a lot of calls. Um, but yes, I look forward to hearing from all of you, please. Give me a ring. Thank you. Yeah. And he is just as crazy in person as he is on, <laughs> on this podcast. That's all, folks. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for coming on. Gal, nice Thank to see you, so mate. Much. Always a always you. a pleasure and a chore. <laughs> <laughs> and, Samaritans, uh, please. <laughs> and uh, he keeps blowing my eardrum out every time he does that. <laughs> so I'm taking these off. So we'll see you next time. Rachel's gone. I, She's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's had enough. All right, see you again. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. At snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road Strood. Try the Viking Challenge 